ring, which is our key value store that allows uh, users to change storage scheme of key value pairs without compromising efficiency and consistency. The problem of storing data reliably is well-established problem and in response to a variety of application requirements, many storage schemes have been developed. The most popular one is replication when the client sends its data to key value store where it's replicated or like multiple copies are made. And like replication in erasure codes, no additional copies made and uh, key value store generates special parity updates which are propagated to the parity nodes. So in this work we focus on read Solomon codes and you're probably familiar with them from RAID 5 and RAID 6 storage systems. And finally, in memory key value store can be used as a caching layer, for example, for caching query results where no redundancy is present. So different storage schemes, they have a different advantages and disadvantages. The replication is a simple scheme which provides a decent level of reliability and availability. However, it has really high storage overhead. On the other hand, read Solomon codes, they provide the lowest possible storage overhead, but it involves computation to generate update and uh, recover data. And finally, caching is the fastest way to store your data since there is no redundancy. However, it's not fault tolerant. And what is more, different storage schemes, they provide different trade-offs in utilization in uh, reliability, availability, performance, and utilization of cluster resources such as memory, uh, memory, uh, memory usage, uh, network load, and CPU load. Here you can see comparison between caching where is no, no redundancy replication free when we have overall free data copies and read Solomon free too when we have free data nodes and two parity nodes. The problem of or weakness of existing key value stores that they support only one sh such storage scheme. And as a result, companies maintain dozens of distinct key value stores which has to be maintained uh, separately and they could even have different uh, APIs. And it uh, increases complexity of uh, deployment of the system. So, and also it's not even clear how you can move the objects across the key value store and be atomic. So clearly there is a need in a key value store which, uh, which can support multiple storage scheme, but I, now I'd like to introduce use cases of such key value store. First of all, the potence of the data can change over time by intrinsic nature of the data. So we have, some, for example, we can have temporal computations and they shouldn't be sto stored redundantly. And when we finished our computation, then we would like to uh, sort them durably, then we could make additional copies, for example. Or, for example, in Snapchat, when you upload your picture, they have to be stored reliably only during the first day of your, after the first day, when you, once you upload your data. And then the redundancy or the reliability, reliability requirements of your data can decrease since uh, your picture will vanish uh, anyway soon. So I'd also like to point out requirements uh, uh, the key value store has to comply with in order to enable such use case. First of all, uh, user has to be able to change storage scheme at key granularity and also uh, user shouldn't know how data is stored in order to access it. So it has to know only the key of the object. The second use case is multi-temperature data management. Quite often in data stores we can distinguish between hot and cool data uh, depending on the uh, access frequency access frequency. So cool data is less frequently accessed and to optimize utilization of cluster resources, it's usually stored with Ritz Lamont scheme. So to enable this use case, we need to support both replication and erasure coding and plus the changes of the story scheme, they have to be immediately visible to all other clients. Finally, there have been many work on relaxing consistency to tune performance. Here we, we proposing tune performance through changing storage schemes. And to enable this case, the, pro, the process of changing storage scheme has to be cheap and it has to be consistent. So our key value store complies with all these requirements and it uh, supports the following API. Here we have conventional function like get, put and delete. Uh, when the client is uh, oblivious to how data is stored, or he can 
client can specify how he wants to store the data with specifying the ID of the storage schemes. And with create uh, call, uh, client can assign a storage scheme to create storage scheme and assign it to some uh, ID. For example, client can create replication free and assign it to ID zero. And then use this ID when, uh, when uh, he writes data to the key value store. And also he can change on the fly the current storage scheme with a move request when he can specify only the key of the object and the desired storage scheme. So I, I can talk a lot about all challenges. Now I'd like to focus on the solution. The key to achieving uh, high performance is to reduce communication overhead. So we chose a decentralized uh, architecture where we have assigned a key shard to the physical nodes and the client applies a hash function to the key and then direct its request to the required machine. And the key idea here is that we uh, stack together different storage schemes which share the same uh, key to node mapping. So here we have, we call this storage scheme MapGest and the, in this example, they all have the same number of key shards, which is equal to three, or they actually have the same key mapping. So, since on every physical machine we have all uh, storage schemes, this request can be directed locally further to the required or requested storage scheme. Uh, the, pro the problem here is that not all storage schemes uh, uh, can have the same number of key shards, and the problem comes from read solomon scheme. In read solomon scheme, the number of key shards or number of data nodes is actually strictly connected to the, to the encoding. So to circumvent this limitation, we designed our modification to read solomon which we called uh, stretch read solomon and I'd like to introduce it on the next slide. So here we can see read solomon to one. We have two data nodes, one parity, below, parity node, and the data on the parity node is equal to XORing data on the node one and not two. So, uh, in other words, D1 plus D2 is equal to P1. And here we have uh, two data nodes, the two primary nodes which can be accessed, so we have only two key shards. And if you'd like to have three, three key shards, as in the previous example, we need to do something. And what we are proposing first, we need to split our data. It doesn't change, uh, encoding can just change the granularity of the, of the updates or granularity of coding, but the, the data stored will be exactly the same. And then we actually distribute these blocks over as many machines as we want. In this case, it's three. So every machine will get two blocks instead of three. And the key idea here is to preserve the coding scheme. By preserving coding scheme, we inherit all properties of original read solomon So stretch modification will have exactly the same properties as the original one, and the only concern is reliability. Since we increase the number of machines, and then, in this case, since we increase the number of machines, the probability of single failure has to increase. And we'd like to study how it influences reliability. So we performed a reliability analysis based on a continuous time Markov model, Markov chain model. And here you can see reliability of read solomon to one It has reliability a little bit less than four nines, and it has two shards. And we, right now, can stretch it over Three machines, four, five, six, seven. As we can see, the reliability uh, didn't change much, and sometimes it goes uh, goes uh, down or goes goes up, uh, but it actually stays the same. We performed the same analysis for different read solomon schemes, and we showed that that in in many in all cases we studied, the reliability uh, hasn't been changed dramatically. And uh, also you can see a small artifact here, for example, read Salmon 3.2. When we stretch it over six machines, it even increases reliability. And we describe this artifact in the paper, so have a look. Uh, now I'd like to have a closer look at the architecture. Here we have five machines uh, where the three machines, their primary one, we assign three shards to them, and the two machines at the bottom, we call them redundant one. They use just for storing uh, replicas or partitions. So we, when users ask to add read Solomon to one, we said we have three, three key shards and we have to use stretch modification. So we add stretch read Solomon to one three. Then the user could ask to add uh, read Solomon three two. We can easily add it, or then user can ask to add 
storage scheme with no redundancy, we call it replication one, since there is only one copy of the data, and number three stays for the number of shards. When the client asks to add replication scheme, we partition the replication scheme into three shards and make replicas for each shard. And the same way we can do for replication five. So the key idea here that all the storage schemes they have the same key to node mapping, and the key will be assigned to a unique uh, physical node. So on the physical node we have multiple different storage primaries of all storage storage schemes, and in this case uh, there will be only one coordinator of this particular key, and it, we can easily change the storage scheme. So we would like to, uh, to change this, and we resolve problem with consistency by uh, using versioning. Basically, when we change the data or move the, or the update the storage scheme, we just increment the version and the client will always access the latest version of the key. So, now I'd like to move to evaluations. We done all our tests on our 12 node uh, InfiniBand cluster. Current implementation use RDMA and it's single threaded. For erasure codes, we used uh, the Resure library, quite famous uh, open source library. And all tests we did with uh, seven different storage schemes, which we call MapGest, and over with three key shards. Here I'd like to focus on the on the main result. Other uh, evaluation you can find in the paper. Here you can see the put latency uh, for four different map just when replication one it's uh, no redundancy, replication two, replication four, and, and stretch read Solomon three two. So as we can see that all these schemes, as we said, they have completely different trade-offs in terms of uh, latency, but now I'd like it compared to the move request which we introduced. As we remember, we, to move the data, we just need the key and specify the storage scheme. So on the right part of the slide, you can see the latency of the move request. As we, as we can see, for the smaller sizes, we have additional overhead. It uh, comes from the fact that we have to uh, resolve versioning. But later, the latency it's actually uh, reduces. And the reason for this is that when the client sends move request, he doesn't send the data to the key value store because it's already had it. That's why it pays off more when you have larger, for larger objects. Uh, so, uh, in the paper, we could find more evaluation when we compare our key value store with other systems, but it's not the main idea of our key value store. We're not trying to compete the other in performance with our key value store. What we want to show that actually you could support multiple storage schemes at low cost and uh, without compromising API or consistency or efficiency. So, to conclude, we design to our knowledge, this is the first key value store which allows users to change storage scheme on the fly at low cost. And for this, we had a smart allocation of our storage scheme and the key shards. And for this, we designed a stretch read Solomon scheme to have an arbitrary number of shards for read Solomon schemes. Thank you for your attention. Uh, any questions? Yeah, let's thank the speaker. So we have time for questions. So while you're all thinking about the question that you want to ask, let me start by asking about your API. So you have this key-centric API that, that gives you um, a lot of flexibility, but what about bulk updates? So if I want to, I know, change my storage policy affecting all of my keys or a large group of my keys. Uh, so, unfortunately, we, ha we haven't implemented it's possible, but I think it would be difficult to inf uh, enforce strong consistency in that case when you have multiple updates, then you need uh, so something like transactions, it's, okay. it would be more challenging. I mean, so do you think in practice you would require efficient support for these kinds of bulk updates or could you get away with without having it and then not having to worry about a strong consistency? Mm. I cannot think about application, but for example, Redis, it supports like bulk update, mm -hmm. but, but you never have this fine granularity for each key. Mm -hmm. And I think for many applications, it's more important to have it per key rather than per the uh, range of keys. Mm -hmm. okay. So any other questions? Yeah. If you have other questions, we can discuss it also offline after the conference. I will be happy to discuss uh, other details of the paper. There's one question there. Hello, uh, really good talk. So I would like to ask um, what kind of 
strong resistance do you support? Is it uh, pretty sequence resistance or uh, linearizability or how uh, do you Linearizability. Linearizability. So you invalidate all of the... So do you have a primary or how do you guarantee such a thing? Uh, since we have one coordinator of the key, okay, the, okay. this node is responsible for everything. Okay, thank you.